When we talk about the terror in the French Revolution, we're talking about a period of about a year from roughly September 1793 to 1794, where the revolutionary government steps up its use of coercion in the revolution. And what we mean by coercion here are things like mass arrests, interrogations, and increasingly the use of violence against the revolution's enemies, most famously chopping people's heads off with the guillotine. Now, when it comes to explaining the terror, there have traditionally really been basically two sets of interpretation, circumstances and ideology. For historians who stress the role of circumstances, the terror is essentially something that the revolutionaries fell into in response to an unprecedented set of crises that were gripping the nation. France was at war with many of the major powers in Europe, like Britain and Austria. There were rebellions against the revolution in major cities like Lyon and Marseille. And there was pretty much a full-blown civil war in the west of the country. So this was a situation where the French government felt like things were really spinning out of control. And so the circumstances arguments would say that essentially they resorted to extreme measures to respond to an extreme situation. Historians who stress the role of ideology, on the other hand, tend to look at who was in power in this period, and that was essentially members of the Jacobin Club. This is a group of revolutionaries who we might situate roughly on the left of the French Revolution, who had taken control of most of the organs of government in France in this period. And for historians who think that there's something about the very ideas of the revolution that leads to the violence of the terror, they look specifically at the ideas of these people, the Jacobins. Was there something about what these people believed that led them to engage in these extreme measures? Now, rather than answer this question, what I wanna suggest is that these interpretations have a politics that helps us to understand the historiography. So, way back in the 1790s, when the terror first happened, it was already the case that to say that the terror was a product of ideas was essentially a political position. It was most associated with counter-revolutionaries and conservatives in Europe who wanted to say that the French Revolution had disrupted the natural state of affairs and it was therefore no surprise that it had led to the extremes of violence that we see in the terror. It showed that there was something fundamentally rotten at the heart of the revolution. Now what's interesting is that if we fast forward all the way to the late 20th century, the argument that the terror was rooted in ideology also has a politics, but it's a different politics. It's the politics of liberalism. So in post-war France, during the Cold War, those historians who were most opposed to the excesses of the Soviet Union and the Soviet Union's use of violence and coercion tended to argue that the French Revolution itself was a moment where you could see ideology leading to state suppression. And when they made the argument that the terror was rooted in Jacobin ideology, they were also implicitly arguing in the present day that there was something inevitable about communist ideology leading to state suppression. By the same token, stressing the role of circumstances in leading to the terror has always been a political position as well. And so in post-war France, it tended to be associated with those on the Marxist left. They were keen, very often, they were members of the French Communist Party, to, in some way at least, defend the aims and ambitions of the Russian Revolution. And they were also keen to defend the aims and ambitions of the French Revolution. And to say that the terror was purely a response to circumstances, or primarily a response to circumstances, was to say that there was nothing inherently wrong with the goals and ideals of the revolution, or indeed those radical Jacobins, this was rather an aberration. It was a deviation from the course of the revolution. There was nothing necessary about it. It was just a response to a crisis. So what I think this reminds us is that historical interpretation always has a politics as well. I'm not trying to say that these interpretations are purely political. There are facts, there are evidence on both sides. But what it does remind us is that when we read historical interpretations of different events in the past, we also need to understand the context in which those historians were writing.